Back in the 19th century, the horse was king, the driving force of Britain's first mass transport system. Then, a hundred years ago, came a dynamic new power, which could haul a boat day and night without food or sleep. Ignition key. Steam engines drove the first horseless boats from around 1880. The 1930s, they were losing out to the more compact diesel. Yet there are those still inspired by the hiss and fuss of steam, men like Phil Martino, who prepares to steer adamant along the Ashby Canal. Well, I hope we're going to get to Shaxton, which is another 13 miles. Uh, this canal is quite shallow for this boat. She draws three feet or thereabouts. We'll probably be doing no more than about two, two and a half miles an hour on average. We will almost certainly run aground at some stage, or stem her up, as we <laughs> tend to say. The reason for that is that uh, unless you keep absolutely in the, in, the, in the channel part of the canal, this boat will, will find herself on the bottom. It gets quite narrow in places, and it is quite difficult, particularly with other boats coming the other way. Um, not their fault, but we rather have to go down the middle and rather push them to the side because we're so much deeper in the water than they are. Um, Adamant runs round about 25 tonnes, most of the modern hire boats probably round about eight. The idea is that this hits the bridge first rather than the poor old chimney which is nowhere near round anymore. You can't see that it's not round until you're up where I am. The problem with running a steamboat, particularly one with the uh, engine and boiler rather far forward is that um, the steerer steers and the engine and drives. This is a bit like a traction engine in fact where there is a distinction between driver and steersman. Our reaction time is a lot slower because our communication system is by, via bells. You can't just swipe a lever and get reverse instantly. We have to communicate. It's probably a sort of five to eight second delay and during that eight seconds the boat can travel quite a long way even at three miles an hour. Nothing much we can do about this. There you are. Push you in, push us straight. Well, we just uh, met a boat that seemed to be trying to go sideways across the canal. I'm not quite certain what happened, but anyway, we came round the bend and there it was, snack going across the canal. Had to fairly smartly go into the reverse, slow her down, but then, having looked at the situation, it seemed the best thing to do was to bounce the two boats gently apart. So we very gently nudged him him back into the bank and us back into a straight line to aim for the bridge hole. It actually worked rather well. <laughs> I'm rather pleased with it. But engines took up valuable cargo space. So carrying boats worked in pairs, the motor towing an unpowered butter. It worked well, until the boats had to separate. There are still some working pairs left, and on their Foxton flight in Leicestershire, lock keepers Mick and Crystal Jones prepare to bow haul a buddy by hand down ten locks. Now nah, hang on, now nah, look, 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 look. We're not going to get anywhere like this. Yeah. Go down with that boat. He'll do this one. Yeah, yeah. That way we'll get somewhere. Thank you. Trust me. I love stuff like this because mainly it's holiday boats now and you get something like this comes along it's a bit of interest and it breaks the day up. So when you do get the working boats mm -hmm. it's a real pleasure to see something like that that used to be used in the olden days. It's just something I enjoy, it's a bit of enjoyment for me instead of getting all the ordinary boats through. This is light, this is empty. Occasionally we get one through that's loaded just a little bit slower, but it still goes through. It's just pulling. Just lean on your rope, let your body do the work. <laughs> At a sluggish 25 tonnes, Adamant is a real handful on the narrow Ashby Canal. Yeah, we might get through if we're lucky, without hitting too, too bad. 
You'll probably need the lid down. Straighten her up. Straighten her up, straighten her up, straighten her up, because you'll bounce off the other, the other side. Hold on. We're through. Fuel consumption is six bags of coal a day, something like that. We have to clean the tubes. There are about 170 of these, and they sit just above the fire. So when you're using dirty coal particularly, they get very, very sooty. And um, from time to time, I go in and clean them. The drawback to this is I have to choose the correct place. Usually there are too many other boats or smart people or something around because the uh, muck that comes out of the top of the chimney can be quite uh, considerable. Not a lot I can do about it. All oh, right, OK. Hey, you didn't think you were going to miss, did you? No, I didn't. <laughs> I get too close in, David. I'm doing my damnedest. People don't realise there's no actual reflecting sign or siren or flashing lights on the front to warn them that this is a deep draft vessel. So uh, you have to hope that people are reasonably aware that you you uh, you are maintaining your middle course. You have to uh, give two or three good strong blasts on the whistle. Sort of, uh, to assert your right of way, if you like. For Phil and Dave Martino, the pleasure of cruising adamant is not scenery or sunshine, but being powered by steam. There is something to do with the speed at which the thing rotates and so on, which is more in tune with the human heart and all this business. Personally, I think it's a little rubbish, but still, to my mind, it's a case of doing the job well trying to build something, make it work, keep it working, and to do it in a, how can I describe it, in an unhurried, unflustered, but in a way that appears to be wholly professional, in the sense that you're not running around making great song and dance about it. I suppose another reason for doing this is it continues a day in May in 1992 when my brother, my older brother and my youngest son were both killed on a steamboat. The accident was a failure of a boiler door joint and um, in some way it's to do with their memories and uh, to be able to continue doing something which we started on that particular day, that together with my own interest in it, um, is what fires me up and keeps me going, which I shall do until either the money runs out or um, the legs give out. You know, sort of racing certainty as to which is going to come first at the present moment. <laughs> Most steamers had gone by the 1950s when even the diesel boats were struggling to survive. Freight had moved to rail and road. 200 years of canal history were drawing to a close. <laughs>